Welcome to the inaugural DCC Insider Podcast. I am David Kibbe. I'm Angelo Bakouris. I'm Adam Haraki. And today we have guest Anthony Cornish, who is a teacher here at Catholic Central, along with a moderator of an entire slew, honestly, of clubs. So um, welcome, Mr. Cornish. How are you? Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, so we, uh, you know, I really, I want to kick this right off and I want to talk about why did you choose CC? Because it's pretty popular, you're not, or well known, that you're not a, um, a, a CC alumni. So why yeah. did you come to Catholic Central? Uh, that's a good question. I basically was at Divine Child uh, before I got here and uh, <clears throat> I didn't know who CC was, what the school was about or anything. And there was a job opening and uh, I basically just applied. So it was a very... You know, I even asked the other teacher, that divine child, I said, you know, what's up with this CC school? Are they good? Is it worth applying? Should I go? And he's like, oh, yeah, for sure. Like, they're a big time school. And so I did a little research and uh, ended up applying. And so it was very uh, kind of chance, you know, just happened to be a job opening at the time when I was looking and it worked out. You stayed at CC now for how many years? I think it's my 14th year. 14th year. So there's obviously some staying power behind yeah. being at CC. Um, and uh, can you tell us, is, is there a moment that's really stood out to you over, your, over the course of the time you've been at CC? Like, you know, obviously 14 years is a long time, but um, has there been something over that course of those 14 years that has really stuck out to you as the key moment that you've enjoyed the most being here? Yeah, it's tough. Like you said, I do a lot at this school. And uh, <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, a couple of moments, I think the first drive, that I participated in, I'm like, what is going on at this school? Like, what is happening? And so it was very like intense. And I was like looking around and figuring out, watching all the teachers do stuff and posters and games and, and all these half days and whatever was going on. So it's very wild and amazing and very cool part of this, this school culture that uh, kind of sticks with you. And so every time a new teacher comes out, I'm like, hey, you know, we got drive coming up. You know about drive? And they're like, no, let's drive. I'm just wait, you know. So have you ever decorated so. your classroom for a drive in like a really kind of outlandish, <laughs> crazy way? I know that um, some you know it, it, all, it all depends on the year with like the how invested the students in my mm -hmm. homeroom are that year because it's hard to you know extract blood from a rock. Right? Yeah. So if you, get, <laughs> yeah. if you get a group of kids that are really interested, then uh, then yeah, you could do some some great stuff. And there's some years where the decoration wasn't great, and um, some that it really was. So I think my first couple years I went all out but you know I'm mm -hmm. usually a couple doors down from Mr. Griffin so it's always a little hard to compete oh, yeah. with, uh, yeah. Yeah. with that and for those that don't know Mr. Griffin like he goes all out you know all we're talking out. like props like he goes to the store and will buy like a stage piece or we'll <laughs> yeah. buy like yeah. chairs like last year we came in and I think he uh, had like a gigantic yeah. 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 light chair yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> like an yeah. inflatable the Budweiser stage riders stage riders oh man this and this year you know drive is just going to be crazy we have you know DC we have villains we have you know Marvel and it's 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 really an exciting time so hopefully we excited every year it's kind of just just as exciting, weirdly enough, yeah. even after 14 years. So yeah. it's uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, a speaking lot. of that, we have president of the senior class, who's our oh, president yeah. of, ca uh, of of the school, <laughs> yeah. um, Adam Haraki, with us, and, and he's kind of leading the charge on all of this drive stuff. So, Adam, do you have like an insight maybe into what we should expect for this year that you can kind of share? It's not going to be like any other drive we've had at CC. It's, okay. We're trying to be uh, be different enough where it's going to be exciting. We don't want to keep repeating the same old where you go in, top 10 salesmen, then you have quota prizes, days off, go home, maybe a few mm -hmm. challenges. We want to change it up a little bit this year. Okay. Uh, we're still working on what exactly that's going to be, but expect a really great drive. So shaking up such an institution like that is, is definitely going to cause some waves like... Mr. Cornish, do you see maybe something from like the teacher perspective? I, I think it's great. You know, you yeah. guys are here for four years, and so every year kind of seems new, right? But after, you know, a decade and a half, like yeah. you get a lot of repetition, and so some fresh ideas. I think it'd be great, honestly. So I think it's it's good to hear that you're thinking outside the box, and you can keep the core of it, right, the culture part of it. But adding mm -hmm. these new things, I think, is uh, is a good good addition. Have you had a favorite theme? Ooh, that's tough. My favorite theme, I think. Honestly, this year is the one I'm most excited about because yeah. I feel like they've been, you know, it, it's hard to come up with a theme that fits all grades and multiple homeroom ideas and, and the, you know, a lot of them are like different but the same. You have movies but one year, but the next year might be like 
cartoon shows or something. And so there's a lot of overlap, and so it feels the same even though it's not. And so yeah. I think this is the first year in a while where it feels like different. So that, that's good. Yeah, yeah. That's good, yeah. So speaking of different, you've been around CC for 14 years, as yeah. you said. So you were able to, you know, see CC pre-COVID and also, you know, post-COVID. Obviously, we're known as the COVID class, so <laughs> we've only seen it post-COVID. and. All the shenanigans freshman year, but can you like, give us an insight on like the main differences like pre-COVID? Pre-COVID, I think what's like what I've seen is that now that COVID is over, it feels like there's like a new energy that's coming through here. I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of like exhaustion from people being mm -hmm. at the school. You know, it's just mm -hmm. just coming into school with just the same old stuff with with masks and being at home and just people were exhausted. Teachers were exhausted mm -hmm. and there's burnout from everybody mm -hmm. and. The guys that senior year who were seniors during the harshest year of COVID, I mean, I give them props because it was a hard thing to pull off mm -hmm. in the middle of COVID. Um, and, uh, you know, now that that's over, I feel like that a lot of people are just ready to move on and, like, you know, make sure there's energy and, and to kind of get a new start. And I feel like it's tying in well with the building coming in and it's kind of all hitting at the same time, right? We've got the 100th anniversary coming up. we got mm -hmm. post-COVID. we got new building. And it's, like, all happening at the same time. So it's, like, a lot of built up excitement from all sorts of directions that are kind of hidden and at once. Technology has really made a difference, I think, on how we look at school as students and also how teachers teach. And, and that came up during COVID in a major way. You know, we were taking teachers that have been teaching for 20, 30 years, right? And expecting them to basically completely pivot what they were doing and teach to a screen, right? And yeah. that was, that was it's, it's a challenge. It was a challenge for us, I think, as students as well. Mm -hmm. Do you think, you know, AI and all of these new technologies that have been developed basically over the course of the past like two or three years um, to kind of combat all of this, do you, what, do you, what do you see the impact of um, on, on students and on our generation? I mean, I think the next 10 years are going to be unrecognizable mm -hmm. from, and, you know, from what I can tell. Uh, it's the, the shift during COVID. I think you lost a lot of teachers who were like, didn't want to deal with the te technology mm -hmm. change. Um, and uh, those teachers that were really resistant to technology kind of like left, mm -hmm. retired, or, you know. Didn't, didn't make it. Um, and those were good teachers too. Yeah, that there's, we, exactly, there's nothing yeah. wrong. It's just, so in a way, COVID kind of like was a good demarcation for like pre-AI and yep. post-AI civilization because I mean this AI stuff really came out of nowhere mm -hmm. to at least the, the average consumer, you know, and it's been what, a year since mm -hmm. Chad GPT came out and yes. how much it's advanced just it's in that crazy. amount of time. It's, yeah, it, I was it, looking at it yesterday and you can like put stuff on like a general marketplace now. Yeah, and you make money off yeah, it, make right? money yeah. off it. I think it's going to be unrecognizable. In, in, in five, ten years, the school is going to change. Every profession is going to change. And uh, if you're not ready for it, then yeah. it's a big problem. <laughs> and frankly, like, you were an outspoken supporter. It's pretty well known around CC that you were an outspoken supporter of ChatGPT and AI. Yeah. And you you wanted to integrate it as fast as possible in the yeah. classroom so that students understood. Why did you take such kind of a, a, a very staunch a, a, a stance behind something that most schools around us were banning and yeah. saying, mm -hmm. we can't do that. I, I think it's like, uh, I'm, I'm very invested in the school mm -hmm. and I work here every day. My job is dependent upon how the school functions. And I think it was just, I couldn't, I could not stand by and watch something happen to the school uh, without a say. So I just became very vocal about it. And apparently I was vocal enough that administration heard it and they were just like okay well you take over it sounds like you know what you're talking about mm -hmm. and um so I did a lot of research a lot of learning and uh yeah i tried to make sure i was as much of an expert as i could be mm -hmm. um to, to prep the school but uh i just think if you're not prepared it's like when the calculator was invented i mean I, I, tons of schools were looking to not have kids use calculators in school and, and i'm sure there were some teachers like no we need to bring them in and teach kids mm -hmm. how to use them and now mm -hmm. the classes half half of a math class is teaching right. kids how to graph on a calculator or how to so it's using technology appropriately, um, I think is important. And I'd rather be at the forefront of that than wait and get steamrolled, yeah. <laughs> yeah. steam yeah. you know? Yeah. It's, uh, I think it would have been a nightmare, honestly, mm -hmm. if we tried to ban it, get, you know, Hancock's right. office would have yep. been filled with students who were <laughs> using it, quote unquote, inappropriately. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and yeah. there would have been no school wide policy and there just would have been a, a very difficult transition, mm -hmm. I think, if we it's, weren't like ahead of it. It's so, very smart. 
So yeah, what do. role do you think AI can, uh, can play in the future of education? Yeah, I, I think the best use of it is for being a assistant. So for instance, if you're looking to write a paper, you don't have it write the paper for you. What you do is you type your own paper and you put it in AI and say, hey, my English teacher isn't here right now. Can you give me any advice as to how to make this essay better? And it will give you advice for how you can make it better. And you can take the advice or not take the advice. For math class, you could get a problem and answer it yourself and then put in your answer and say, is my answer correct? And, it, you know, not everybody has like a dad or a mom that can help yeah. them with their calculus. And if you can't make it in in the morning to talk to Ms. Sharkey and, and go to math lab, then what are you going to do? Are you going to go to YouTube and watch a video? Okay, yeah, you can do that. But AI, I think, is just much better at uh, answering those direct questions. And, and yeah, it makes mistakes and, and stuff, but that's all, that's all just going to be getting better and better and better as, as time goes on. And, um, so I think, it, but kind of as an, as an assistant. So kind of like a personal it's tutor. Like a personal tutor, exactly. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's a perfect way to look at it. So, so how, do we, how do we go about even regulating that? For, from because we're, we're rewriting the playbook basically right yeah. now and that's kind of what these past two years have been is rewriting the playbook as, as teachers as schools how do we go about writing the playbook for AI because every it feels like every day something new comes out or a new feature yeah. comes out that we can't control right I think you so, got to be nimble you know you can't just be stuck in this position where you're you're gonna be you have some policy and you're not going to change it because 12 months from now, and I told the administration this when I was kind of prepping the teachers mm -hmm. in, in the uh, summer, 12 months from now, everything might be completely different than what it is now. And we got to be ready to roll with it. So um, the playbook is be adaptable, right? Mm -hmm. You can't just be stuck in whatever old system you are used to. So I think mm -hmm. you got to be ready to change when the times change and things are changing very quickly. I mean, it used to be you have the radio, and the radio was there for decades, and then the TV was invented, and people had decades to adapt, and, and, you know, and AI just hit quickly, and it, things just changed so much faster than what they used to. So I think it's people getting used to change more often, I think is kind of the, the backbone would, of being prepared. Would you be like up to teaching like students how to like use AI like in a, like as a class? Yeah, I mean, I could probably develop a class like that, but I think... I think better for now because things are changing so fast mm -hmm. that it's better to have periodically have homeroom assembly, right? Grown from yeah. everybody wants to have homeroom <laughs> assembly, but yeah. have a homeroom assembly or home have an assembly. optional after school thing or an optional before right. school thing, or maybe I can record a lesson and kids can watch it if they want an update on what's going on. And mm -hmm. um, I think that would be better for now as things, you know, change yeah. quickly. Speaking of changing quickly, you know, um, We've seen crazy developments in AI like recently, and a bunch of companies are like racing to create mm -hmm. like the best AI possible, yeah. right? Do you think this is dangerous? Do you think we're like racing to an edge of a cliff, and yeah. by the time we see the edge, we're gonna break too late? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, so it, I don't know how many people who are listening to this, or, or the three of you, have um, know anything about game theory, but uh, in game theory, there's this concept called Moloch, which is the name after. Uh, demon in the Bible, right? It's this Moloch situation. But essentially in game theory, it's this idea that uh, when two people are competing for something and the advantages locally for you are to do one action, but in the end, both people are racing towards some cliff. Mm -hmm. And so like a really good example of this is like you look at like crab fishermen. It's in your best interest as a crab fisherman to go out and get as many crabs as you can, right? But if you overfish, then there's no crabs up for anybody. Mm -hmm. But both individual crabbers are looking to get as many crabs as they can. So individually, it's in your best interest to get as many as you can, but they're both racing to this edge where nobody gets any, right? right. And so in this situation, mm -hmm. the winner of this AI race is just gonna be just unbelievably wealthy. And there mm -hmm. can be multiple companies, but like the core couple of groups of, of companies are just gonna be, just have a ton of control and a ton of wealth and the rest are going to be left in the dust. And so there's this race, right, to see who gets there. But, and so you can't stop this race. Right. But the downside is that I do think, in the end, we're, we're headed towards some very difficult stuff as a society yes. to grapple with. So Sam Altman left OpenAI mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago and, and promptly came back to OpenAI. But what do you think his leaving <laughs> OpenAI, because obviously it shook the entire market, yeah. right? Like, yeah. like Microsoft stock tanked right we, we 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 talked about that and at, at a finance club meeting actually which is another club that you're involved in yeah, UACC yeah. but but <laughs> what 
play do you think um, people honestly make, or what role do you think people make in in this whole AI space? Is it is it Sam Altman's company, or is it OpenAI? I think in the end, like the a, the average individual person in society is going to have no say. Mm -hmm. That's going to be these handful of companies, and right now it's mm -hmm. Google and Microsoft. I mean, OpenAI, sure, it's a separate company, but it's owned 49% by Microsoft, yeah, Microsoft right? Yeah. So, I mean, there's just this, there's going to be a couple of companies that are, Amazon's going to be in this, in the race, mm -hmm. and Apple probably. I was going to say, where is, where is Apple, Apple said, they're, 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 I think they're waiting <laughs> as they usually do. Okay. It's like you think about the Echo, Echo's Dot, or not the Echo, mm -hmm. the Amazon Alexa came out mm -hmm. first, and then Humbug. they were like, oh, we're going to have personal assistants too, and that's mm -hmm. kind of, they came in later. So, I think they're kind of waiting and kind of seeing where things are going to fall mm -hmm. to, to jump in, but... Uh, I don't think you're going to see a lot of startups because it's yeah. very expensive to train an AI. Right. Um, then you got China. China can just <laughs> steal your AI code, yeah. and now you're dealing with another country, and they don't have the same uh -huh. rules as us. And right. so you have this competition, this Moloch that's going on between companies, Microsoft and Amazon and whoever. And then you're going to have the same competition going on between countries. China is going against the U.S., and the winner takes all. Mm -hmm. You know, and, yeah. and it's this race, and whoever gets it wins. But we both lose also. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very, very tricky um, to, to, to live, you know, and figure out what's going to happen to the average person. So you know. do you think that like, the a this AI generation could start like an AI cold war similar to how yeah. we had with the Soviets? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do think in a lot of ways AI can be just horrifically dangerous, mm -hmm. if not regulated properly, in the same way that uh, nuclear weapons are. And so it's going to have to be regulated and uh, there should be some sort of international regulation and, and national regulation, and uh, otherwise it could get out of hand. So yeah, uh, and that's coming, but it may not come fast enough for things not to get ugly. Um, so it's almost like two fronts. We're dealing with this education bit because it's important for us in the moment, but then there's this overarching difficulties that I think our society is going to have to cope with. And um, but that's for you guys as adults when you graduate. Right? <laughs> yeah. Send you out, and you're, you're, you'll be the politicians here that will help. So one thing I had a question on was you're a Latin teacher mm. at the school. Yeah. And well, ironic being right being <laughs> attached to the tech stuff. So Latin is, as some people call it, dead language. Oof, no. <laughs> so, it's not spoken <laughs> much. But yeah. how do you think AI will affect the future of languages? Will it retrieve yeah. languages like Latin mm. and like? I, I think it's a, it's a super good question. I, I think it's going to let things that used to be dead just bring them back to life in a really cool mm. way. Like. As soon as uh, ChatGPT was capable of it, and maybe like six months ago, it actually does Latin pretty well. And so I started to fool around with it. And Marcus Aurelius, who many of you may not know, was a, a Roman emperor, and he's a he's a philosopher. And uh, I was like, let's just see what happens. So it's like I told Chat, I said, hey, based on all of Marcus Aurelius's writings, he's got quite a bit. My meditation. Pretend, yeah, exactly. Yep, the meditations. I said, uh, have a conversation with me about Stoicism, which is a philosophy in Latin based upon all the readings. And so I was able to talk to Marcus Aurelius in Latin. Like, how cool is that? Like, you would not have been able to that's do really that cool. before just a few months ago. So I think that's really an amazing, I mean, and you'll be able to do this not just in, in I mean, think about having a, a conversation in Spanish class with Pablo Picasso mm -hmm. or with uh, any number of El Greco, you want to talk <laughs> to the painter. I mean, you can, you can just, well, what a cool, or have a debate. Let me watch a debate between two chat GBTs. One is going to be, uh, Dwight Eisenhower, and he's going to talk to Winston Churchill. Yeah. <laughs> you know that's, what I mean? Yeah. How cool would that really, be to watch that? that, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, it's just an amazing way to bring history to life and bring languages to life. And um, and I think so old languages like like Latin. And it's even being used right now, weirdly enough, to translate languages. Oh, and yeah. They, th so they think gonna they're going to be able to crack Linear A, which has been a language that no one's been able to decipher yet. Um, uh, Etruscan is another language that they've been working on. And AI, I have no doubt that not too long from now, AI is yeah, just going to be able to crack yeah. all of those. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just going to unlock a treasure trove of, mm -hmm. of, of new material to look and, at. And new so. learning, honestly, too. Yeah, right. And at CC right now, we're kind of at, you're getting, getting toward a new, really, really amazing new growth period. You know, we have this new campus that's being developed right now. Lots of expansion, lots of kind of... Uh, you know, unsure about what the future looks like, right, for, for some of these amazing projects that are coming from, from the student's perspective. And you have a little bit of an insight, being from the teacher side of things, mm -hmm. what's coming to CC. Um, and one of the amazing things that really struck me that we were talking about was the, uh, the, the room 
that you can sit in. I think it's like a 270 degree screen mm, or whatever, oh, yeah. Yeah. fully yeah. immersion yeah. room that's going to be developed in the new um, STEM center. Yeah. And do you think that we're going to start to see artificial intelligence come to things like that? And, yeah. and we're going to be able to talk to like Roman soldiers, like what you were saying? I don't think you're going to keep AI out of anything. Okay. It's going to be involved in everything. So yeah, I mean, I, I hopefully I haven't seen what it's look mm -hmm. what it's going to look like yet in person. I mean, I've been in the room, but it's not fully mm -hmm. decked oh, out yet. yet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it'd be cool to like do a flyover of the Roman Forum, and, mm -hmm. or yeah, like you said, talk to a Roman soldier. But I, I think in five years, AI is just going to be in everything. It's going to be yeah. in absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's without a doubt, everything in that building over there is just going to be. It's gonna be prepped and ready to go, you know. That's instead of having to like adjust the telescope yourself, you can say, <laughs> yeah. "Show me, you know, Sagittarius A," and it's gonna be able to like move the telescope and focus it, and you just look All at that. it. You know, just, that's yeah. that's it's, yeah. it's gonna be amazing. Yeah. So, and you've been yeah. talking a lot about how AI is gonna change the world and how it, it's like pretty much it's gonna progressively keep learning and mm -hmm. keep getting better. Do you think eventually AI could uh, develop like emotions? I I very much think that uh, at some point you are gonna, not going to be able to distinguish between whether or not uh, an AI has consciousness or not. And I think that's a tough thing because even in humans, we, you know, we take for granted that somebody else is conscious. And this is, this is called the hard problem of consciousness. It's, it's this um, idea that I, I know that you're conscious because I know that I'm conscious and I have to take your word for it. There's no test I can do to, to test if somebody's conscious. Right. And so if you're talking to an AI and they're ta it's talking back to you, how do you know if it's conscious? Mm -hmm. If I poke at it and it says, ouch, how do I know if it's actual pain or not? And what is the difference between uh, artificial pain and actual pain? Uh, if, it's, if it's weeping and sobbing because I'm making it work too hard, do I feel bad for it? And I can tell you already, mm -hmm. weirdly enough, I feel that. I'm chatting with chat and I'm getting it to write and it's a couple times when I was developing a, a, a Latin uh, lessons, I had it, it kept making mistakes. I said, no, no, not that way, please do it again. And it would say, oh, I'm so sorry, let me, let, let me try one more time. Oh, and then it would make another mistake and I'd say, yeah. ooh, you messed up again, can you please try one more time? And after three or four tries, I literally, there was a piece in me that was like, <laughs> man, I feel really bad. Really bad for chat. Oh, Whether yeah. or not, no, I don't think it has feelings, mm -hmm. right? But I do think at yeah. some point, whether it has feelings or not, I don't think that humans will be able to tell. And that is going to cause yeah. a really interesting philosophical problem for, for us as humans to decide if and when we can. I mean, there may be a time where there are people in Congress fighting for the rights of AI, okay. right. yeah. whether we're working them too hard or whether they deserve like, I mean, I think this story is apocryphal, but there's a, a story of a uh, uh, AI at Amazon that they gave kind of like a uh, little robot was doing some things mm -hmm. and it was working too hard and eventually it just unplugged itself oh, yeah. <laughs> because it was like, it was like oh overworked God. and it just walked over and <laughs> unplugged the cord from the wall so it didn't have wow. to I don't know if it's oh, true or not but it's, it's funny and I, I do it's, think at some point you could run into that do you, yeah, that do you me of like a painting like I guess like structure I saw online it was like a robot that is just like ooze that keeps like it's like on the floor, mm -hmm. and it's one job says so to go. I've and seen like that with the ink, right? Just scoop the ink back, right? in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> back in, and people yeah. are starting to like feel bad for the yes. robot. That's that's, that's right. its only purpose. It's yeah. rusting away. Yeah. Has yeah. one job that's never ever going to be able to complete. Mm -hmm. It's like it's struggle. Like, well, how we we don't know what the machine's feelings. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, a machine. Yeah. And the, and the weird moral problem with that is, and this is going to be a great question for your moral theology teachers at some point, right? It's uh, <laughs> the real moral problem with that is. Let's say you're not sure if that robot or that AI has feelings, mm -hmm. and you're not sure. Yep. Well, if you treat it poorly or you're mean to it, and it happens to have feelings, and you don't, let's say it's a million to one, it's like yeah. 999,999 chance that it doesn't have feelings, but that one chance, mm -hmm. and you treat it horribly. Well, you could be, you could be committing the worst atrocity in the history of the universe mm -hmm. by having millions of AIs that are all treated horribly. horribly. Yeah. And you run that risk, and, exactly. and, that, and that's a really scary like proposition. So I think well, the philosophers of the future are going to have to figure this out, um, mm -hmm. and, and I think it's going to come a lot faster than, than we mm -hmm. expect. I think it, this is like years, not decades. Do, do you, you think know? that uh, AI could be conscious right now, but it's just not revealing? Yeah, I, I think that's possible. I, I think the hard thing is, is we have a really hard time right now even defining the word. What do you mean by conscious? Right. 
like that, and, and, and we can't even define it. And so I think that struggles, and especially if, if you know, you're Catholic and, and religious, like the idea of the difference between being conscious and having a soul, those things are separate. Mm-hmm. You know, right. and, and so like that creates another issue too, where you're having to adjust and um, and figure that out. Yeah. So to pivot kind of to your past career prior to coming to Detroit Catholic Central, um, you know, banks are actually starting to use artificial intelligence, yeah. which is really scary because that's dealing with people's money, right? Yeah. And and that's you know, as Mr. Oakleaf told us, money is probably one of the things that's going to cause the most stress in your life, mm-hmm. right? Or it could be one of the things that cause the most stress in your life. So. Um, I, you know, was on the phone with my bank recently, actually, and you know, I was on the phone. I, I was expecting Going I was talking 17, to a person. Seventeen years old. Right, yeah, seventeen years old. Right? No, I was and, on the and phone I was. Well, no, I was. And, I, and, and, and so, 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 I'm, I'm talking to this person, right? And it turns out not to be a person. And this is an AI robot. And that is the scary thing. Mm-hmm. Is now we're talking about we're going to be talking to people on the phone with these companies through mm-hmm. these call centers, right? That are going to sound like a person. Yeah. They're going to act like a person. Mm-hmm. They're going to answer questions like a person. But they're not a person. Yeah. And that person at the end of the day, I feel honestly like I don't trust an AI robot mm-hmm. to, to be doing my banking for me. I, I just I don't, right? Yeah. And I'd rather and I mean the the, the the opposition to that though is you're stuck in a world where nobody answers your call because you there's a thirty minute wait time to get an actual exactly. customer service put on the phone. So you're, <laughs> yeah. you can get somebody immediately. Yeah. You know, AI yeah. or yeah. this AI or AI like thirty minutes on, on old, right? Yeah. So you were a financial advisor, yeah, that was correct me if I'm wrong, okay. yeah. prior to Community Catholic Central. And honestly, financial literacy has become one of the most important things in high school mm-hmm. right now. Very and getting important. young people to understand how to save, invest, make yeah. money, and be prepared for the future. Mm-hmm. So is there one thing or maybe a couple of things that you can share with us that would help set not only CC students up, for a bright future mm-hmm. um, investment-wise, but also could help alumni and all those uh, from the community that are watching. Yeah, this, yeah, this yeah. I mean, the, the, the finance club started, I forget, seven, mm-hmm. eight years ago, something yep. like that. And uh, it honestly came out of the conversations I would have with students about my previous profession. The kids are, what did you used to do? And we talk about what I did and, and, and kind of give some advice to the kids about what they should be doing. And um, the thing I always told students in particular is that if you qualify for it, which Every student should, because there's an income requirement, and I doubt very many students here are. Unless you're some influencer, and I don't know, about <laughs> it, but they're, uh, they're, they're uh, you know, making not enough money to do this. But they can open a Roth IRA, and, and yes. Roth IRA is a, a tax-free vehicle you can use to to invest for retirement. And honestly, at your age, at six, 15, 16, 17 years old, could be the smartest thing you ever do. Yep. To be completely honest, there's pensions are going away, and People are having to take care of their own retirement needs. Social Security may or may not be there, yeah. or it may not be enough. Mm-hmm. And so you need to save for yourself. And a Roth IRA is a good vehicle. I do want to press because I saw, you know, yeah, I'm old, but I did see a TikTok video of this recently, mm-hmm. which is hilarious. Is some woman was like talking about how she saved for uh, put money away when she was 20 and 21 and 22 into a Roth IRA, but she didn't realize until years later when she got married when her husband told her that. Uh, that the money was in the Roth IRA, but actually wasn't invested in anything. Oh. So the Roth IRA is just an account. Yeah. Right. And so in that account, it protects you from taxes, uh, mm-hmm. but you can invest in all sorts of stuff, st- uh, stocks and mutual funds and mm-hmm. bonds. And uh, really at, at your guys' age, like a mutual fund is a really good place to start. It's well diversified and um, it's going to have long-term steady growth. And, uh, and then you can just set it and forget it and just put it in there and leave it until, mm-hmm. until you're ready to take it out. Um, and I think that's getting used to saving at a young age, I think is, is crucially important. I mean, just like a, a weird stat at your age, if you put 50 bucks a month away, which is like a coffee every other day, uh, from now until you're 65, you know, depending on the market, obviously I can't give guarantees, but you know, it could be seven, $800,000, mm-hmm. 50 right. bucks a month. And, mm-hmm. and most kids can't afford that. It's just like a few hours a month at a job. Yeah. So that would be the best advice I think for, for students. Um, and even as an adult, if you're an adult and you qualify and you have to check the current limits, but I think a, a Roth IRA is, uh, for a married couple, is like 180000 a year. If you make less than that, then, then you should be doing that. I think it's in the 200 for a it married couple, be, actually. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, yeah it's, it's and, been going and up rates are changing years. recently, too. Yeah, yeah so rates are changing. It's, um, yeah. it's, it's really so. becoming, and there's so many, even if you're out of that, mm-hmm. there are ways to convert your All sorts back of ways, yeah. into Roth. So there's absolutely no reason that, you know, and especially... I, I know that I started a Roth recently yeah. and like it based on finance club, honestly yeah. based on yeah. being involved in finance club. Right. But there's no reason not to put something aside. Yeah. And, and we don't are kind of, you know, the future for us is a little bit, 
scary from that perspective just because you know home prices are going up yeah. at a Infl- really interest rates, inflation rates. interest yeah, rates yeah, wow. but you know we're, we're, we're looking at this two three percent gain right on on you know income every year but we're looking at 10 percent mm-hmm. 15 20 yeah, percent raises right. in home prices yeah. and it's really really scary and that's not steady I, I think that can be you guys have a, a, a short term i mean you've also experienced the longest running growth in the market exactly. basically in the history of our country so i mean i can't yeah. Since since the finance club has started, the, our account has only gone up. Yeah, you know, and so you guys haven't dealt with a big recession yet, and mm-hmm. and you know, I've I've even at my age, I've dealt with two, I think, two major mm-hmm. ones, um, and so that that that'll happen. I, I think the housing prices is not a scary thing to me. It's going to go up over time, just like stocks, and it's going to mm-hmm. fluctuate, and it's up right now, but it'll mm-hmm. go down. And if that weren't true, then everybody would be in real estate, right? <laughs> but um, but everyone's not. So it's just it, it, real estate is just another asset that's good to diversify out, which right. you got and um, with everything else. So yeah. you know, um, one of the stories I was reading up on like over break was uh, the amount of debt, mm. that credit card debt Americans have. So Americans have reached a total of one trillion dollars in credit card debt, right? Ouch. And um, their credit scores are low, so when they go to buy goods, like mm. they don't qualify, right? So there's this thing called BNPL. Do you know about that? Buy now, pay later. Yeah, I mean, I haven't heard, I haven't heard that acronym, right. but yeah, that makes sense. Buy now, pay later, like right? Away and, so yeah, so a lot of people have been using this because you don't have to show your credit scores and mm. they, they take the goods and then pay later. But 49% of the payments have been late mm-hmm. and majority of the purchases have been on, on Black Friday Yeah, as you, could assume. So what are your thoughts on like these like vinyl payers? Yeah, I mean, I'm completely it? against it. I, I yeah. have, uh, I highly recommend that as you get older, you get a credit card because there are perks you get. Like I have, exactly. a, I, have a, I have a, I have a Delta one, so I get free miles and, and that's great and amazing, but I don't ever carry a balance. I buy it and I pay it off at the end of the month. If you can't afford it, you shouldn't be buying it, period. Yeah. I, I'm just very a firm believer in, uh, in, in that kind of attitude. So, um, and that goes for not just me, but my feelings about the country. We don't have the money, don't spend it. Like, you yeah. just yeah. basically should be spending what you have unless it's like some sort of an emergency. Like, obviously, if you're broke and your car breaks and you can't get to work, that might be an instance where like putting something on a credit card makes sense. Yeah. Because you can't afford to get to work, right? But if you're buying stuff on Black Friday, because mm-hmm. even though you don't have the money, that's not a good reason. And I think right. that's just gonna, that is not only gonna put you in debt forever, but it's gonna teach your kids that that's the way to live life and they're going to end up in the same situation. Mm-hmm. So I think it's, and that's one of the things of the finance club I hope that kids leave with here is just being smart about their money, being smart about saving uh, and investing and only spending what you have and preparing for the future uh, and kind of getting away from all that, like, you know, common <laughs> American yeah. stuff yeah. about, mm-hmm. you know, buying on credit. Uh-huh. Honestly, how do you feel? So you were, you were referencing kind of like that TikTok video earlier, mm-hmm. right? How do you feel about everybody and their brother now thinking that they're like a social media finance, you know, yeah, like yeah. like wizard, right? And they go on TikTok and they post these mm-hmm. videos about, oh, I saved this much money, or yeah. this is what you do to hack this, right? Yeah. Uh, what what is your what is your take? I see that? I see that totally as just a, this is just like a, a survivor bias. Basically, you've got a whole bunch of people that are all having mm-hmm. advice, and the people with that advice never make it to the internet. Mm-hmm. Right, and so if you if you give advice that's going to last a long time, you can get lucky. To, you know, there's some people that pick stocks and they get lucky, yeah, and they think they're hot stuff because mm-hmm. they've made this like stock prediction, and then they go online and everyone thinks that they're going to follow their advice because they're hot stuff. And mm-hmm. um, I think the people that give good advice but don't make it. I remember mm-hmm. somebody suggested we buy Tesla, yeah, a few years ago in finance club when we voted it out. Mm-hmm. I still think to this day, even though we would have made a ton of money, mm-hmm. that that was a good choice. Good choice. Yeah, and so just because somebody turned out to be correct doesn't mean that it was the right, it was choice. right choice to make yeah. you know it's like going to the casino and they bet on black and they <laughs> doubled their money and said see uh-huh. don't follow my advice bet on yeah. black yeah but no. that's not that's not necessarily good advice right and so. you know like people like dave ramsey i feel like mm. and Susie orman are like kind of the gods of this space right yeah. and they're you know with everybody having a smartphone in their hand now it offers everybody the chance to to be that person mm-hmm. right or to be that social media you know, icon, right, for finance. And, and in most cases, a lot of these people aren't, <laughs> right? And they're, and, they're, and they're spreading false ideas that are kind of confusing the society. And I know Dave Ramsey addresses this basically every day mm. on the show, right? Because someone yeah. will call him and say something, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they're like, oh, well, you know, 
Cardet's great debt. And he's yeah. like, well, obviously, Cardet's not no. debt, right? Yeah, yeah, Unless, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the most important thing is just keep it simple. Nobody knows what's going to happen in the housing market. Yep. Nobody knows what's going to happen to interest rates. Nobody knows what's going to happen to stocks. And if they tell you that, they're lying. Yeah. The only way to be successful in investing is to be consistent mm -hmm. and to be diversified. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. It's so simple. And if, if you do more than that, then you're just guessing. And the people tell you to do something different than that, they're also just guessing. So just be yeah. simple and stick with that. So one question I have is kind of going back to a previous topic we talked about. How do you think AI will, uh, in the future, be able to predict like the mm -hmm. stock market or uh, how, what its effect in business? I mean, I, I think I mentioned this before. I don't think there's going to be any place in our society where AI isn't in integrated. And I think that could be, it, it's not going to help things in, in, in the world of finance because sure, it's going to make things more efficient, but a big problem that you could see is if we give too much control to an AI on the market, well, they could, maybe they think it's in our best interest, human's best interest to have the stock market crash. Too many, too many people in debt, we got to correct it now, mm -hmm. make these people go bankrupt so we can reset it. And they decide to push the stock prices down. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not like a free market. That's, right. the, that, that's being no. controlled by AI, and that could cause a real problem. So I, I think these are the dangers that we kind of mentioned before. Super great utility in all sorts of places, and we, got it, you, we can use it for that, but we have to really be observant about mm -hmm. these places where it could cause havoc when we give too much control to these like automated artificial uh, stuff. So. It sounds like in a way, like AI might start playing God when it comes yeah. to like our lives. Absolutely could, and it and it may think that it knows what's best for us. Yep, and that's that can be trouble. Mm -hmm. Well, on that note, Mr. Cornish, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we really appreciate yeah, having you course. honestly, and especially taking your it's time to be, to be on the first episode mm -hmm. of hopefully many. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, um, Have to come back. Yeah, you know, these are these are topics that we could talk about for days. Yeah, um, we really so, could. Yeah, we really <laughs> could. And it's 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 really interesting. So we appreciate you greatly for for joining yeah, us. Yeah, absolutely. Today. Thanks for having us, um, everybody. Yeah. We will. Uh, yeah. Thanks, you guys. Yeah. Thank appreciate you. it. Good luck with all the other Thank episodes. You. And yeah. Take care. Uh, Thank you. Nice to see you. Yeah.